Hello there, my name is Mike England and welcome to my show Miracles Happen with One Good Thought. I want to talk to you first of all about the show. The show is here as an introduction to the power of thought and how you can use thought to get the life that you want, the life that you deserve. It's a way in being able to show you how to manifest your dreams, utilising the power of thought, the power of the law of attraction. And on this show we'll be covering a series of subjects from money to relationships to health to happiness to all sorts of different things. But this first show is an introduction to actually what the law of attraction is and how the power of thought can help you. First of all, I'd like to talk about what the law of attraction is. The term is thrown about all over the place at the moment with many books, many self-help books, many DVDs and programmes. What is the Law of Attraction? Well, it's quite simple really. The Law of Attraction is based on the principle that like attracts like. So, for instance, if you think of a magnet attracting metal clippings, they attract to each other. That's basically the Law of Attraction. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to also mention that through the power of thought, thought gives off energy. And this energy that thought gives off actually magnetises things towards it. And depending on the emotion that's experienced when you think these thoughts, it depends on what experience you begin to attract or manifest into your life. Now there are many, many techniques on there and power of thought and how to change thought and positive thinking. What I like to say to people is rather than positively think, positively feel. Because when you positively feel, you naturally attract emotions, you naturally attract thoughts that allow you to feel positive. So how does this all work? Let's look at the science a little bit first. Science tells us that on the very small atomic level everything is moving. Everything is moving at its own frequency, at its own speed. So whether it's the chair you're sitting on, whether it's the screen you're watching now, whether it's the body you're in, it appears solid but actually it is not. It is just energy, it is just atoms and molecules moving about at different frequencies, at different vibrational frequencies, which give the appearance of solidity. Now to take this one step further, science at the moment, in its current understanding, doesn't understand actually how solid matter actually appears. Because there's more of nothing than there is of things, than there is of atoms. So what they've come to the conclusion is that this is a sort of holographic universe. What I mean by that is it's a, like a projector. It's a projector out there of consciousness, of our thoughts, so that everything out there now that you see is really a hologram. It's not really solid at all. And they're still trying to establish what actual reality is. Now, coming from the point of view of thought, as we talk about these frequencies, everything gives off an energy, including thought. And these energies are attracted to each other like for like, depending on the frequency that's vibrating. So, for instance, if you're feeling happy, if you're feeling good, you will naturally begin to attract circumstances where those emotional states are experienced more and more. So, the reason this show is called Miracles Happen with One Good Thought is to give you techniques, allow you to apply certain principles so that you can begin changing your thoughts to create better emotional states. And when you create these emotional states, you can then begin to attract, to manifest the things in your life that you want, to begin to live the life that you deserve, the life that you want. Now I've been working one-on-one -on -one with clients for many years now as a hypnotherapist and a law of attraction coach to actually assist people, to actually shift their thoughts in new directions, to move their thoughts to where they want to be. And it's incredible to me, even today, amazing even today, to see the wonderful changes that happen in people's lives just through a simple change of thought, a simple change of emotional state. Whether it be releasing a phobia, whether it be reducing the size of the body, or whether it be attracting a new job opportunity, or actually bring in a new relationship. It's all about the way you think. Let's look at this logically first before we actually talk about it in terms of law of attraction. Do you go into a room with someone and there's been an argument in that room? You can sense the energy in that room before anyone's even spoken because 
the aggression that was from that argument or the tension is felt, it's picked up because the energy from the thought is actually within the room that you're entering which creates the discomfort. Now in the same way, think about going into a room and instantly you like someone but your friend thinks I don't like them. And in many ways, you don't even know them, you've never met them before. But what can happen is sometimes, let's say for example, um, that personality of the person that you dislike is similar to someone who bullied you when you were earlier. Well your subconscious mind picks up that information instantaneously because it takes in about 20 billion bits of information every second. So your conscious mind isn't fully aware of what's been took in. But your subconscious is and it gives you that feeling that there's something not quite right. So you either repel or you're attracted to the individual that's there. And this is very similar to the way the law of attraction works. So for instance if you're going for a job interview and you're feeling lacking confidence or you're feeling that um, you're not deserving of that job, those signals will be picked up on, by the people interviewing you. And the same happens all the time, whether it's a business opportunity, whether it's someone investing in your company, or whether it's a relationship. Why is it that when people go into relationships, they're constantly looking for love? A lonely person looking for love all the while, wanting that right person to come along, and as soon as they get into a relationship, all of a sudden, lots of people are there, lots of people who want the attention. Because what's happened is you've changed your emotional state to feel in love. And because you feel in love, you begin to attract other people that could actually fit into that falling in love. So, what can you do? Well, the first thing is to begin to change in your thought processes, beginning to change your beliefs. Beliefs are just thoughts that you've practiced. Beliefs are just thoughts that you've thought over and over and over over a long period of time, and the subconscious mind has taken them on board and created a habit of them. So how can you begin to change this? Well, it's quite simple, really. All that's required is to actually just make a little bit, just a little bit of concerted effort to divert your thoughts slightly in a different way by creating new emotional states, by creating new patterns of thought. Sometimes I get people coming to me and say, well, I can't change my beliefs. Beliefs are impossible to change. Every time I try to change my belief, I can feel it like it's an uphill battle. It's almost like my mind doesn't want to go that way. And this is a common problem. What it's called is a contradiction. We have these beliefs that continue going over and over and over in our heads. Sometimes we're not even fully aware of them. Then the instant you try to change it to something that you want. For instance, let's, let's take being overweight. Someone who's overweight all their life has thought, well, I'm overweight, there's nothing I can do, I've tried diets, I've tried exercise, and still, I'm overweight. And then the instant they think, well, I'm going to think something different, I'm going to think about being thin, they instantly hit a brick wall. Because what they're trying to do is trying to place themselves in a position where they can't possibly see at the moment. They can't possibly see a place where they could be thin at that moment in time. And it creates a massive contradiction because the belief system there is stating that no, you're overweight. So it's like a battle going on, like really hard work. And every time you try to eat different types of foods, it's sort of, you crave the foods that you're trying to avoid. And it's because of that battle. Now, one of the ways that can assist you to change those beliefs is by going into a nice, dreamy, comfortable state where the conscious mind is less resistant, where the conscious mind can actually can actually be avoided. You can avoid that critical faculty, that faculty that continually argues. And we do this all of the time, all day. Every time you're daydreaming, you're accessing that wonderful dreamy state where that transformation can happen. But usually what people do is daydream in a way that increases the beliefs they already have. Oh, I hate this job. Oh, I feel stupid. Oh, that was a stupid thing to do. Oh, look at my body. Oh, I can't fit into that dress. And that's what people continue to do nine times out of ten in those situations. But if we begin to change that, if we begin to get the mind to focus on something in a completely different way, then 
the subconscious mind can start cooperating, cooperating with you. And when that happens, you can have the full benefit of the subconscious mind then. And just as it's been easy for you to be overweight, it can be just as easy for you to be the size and shape that you choose to be. Or just as easy it is for you to be unsuccessful, it can be just as easy for you to be successful. So how do you go about doing this? Well, as I said, we talked about this dreamy, relaxed state, and through the different shows that will be experienced, we'll be talking about all sorts of different techniques. But what can you do right now? The first thing is to get off the subject of being overweight. Because sometimes it's too uncomfortable, too uncomfortable to even think about it, to even feel about it. But this is something I want you to hear. The subconscious mind, if you have the cooperation of the subconscious mind and the emotional state attached to it, always replicates whatever you are focused on. So if you're observing something, it begins to replicate it. If you're thinking about something, it begins to replicate it. So, whatever subject it is, go general with it first of all. Start to think about people you know that eat what they want and are thin. Start to think about all the people in the world that eat incredibly, probably more than the person that's overweight does, and they're thin. Think about all the wonderful dresses or trousers or suits that can be worn by somebody who's thin. Now, you're not thinking about you in particular, but what you're doing is you're actually placing your mind on the subject of being thin. You're placing your mind on the subject of actually reducing the bodily weight. And by making gentle shifts like this, eventually it moves you in the direction of where you want to be. And then when you get to that point where you want to think about you being overweight, you've breached that belief and it's relatively easy for you to do. And then when that happens in a consistent way, you may begin to make better choices about the food you choose to eat. You may choose to eat less. Your body may give you signals to let you know you're fuller, quicker, and choose to leave the rest of the food on the plate. You may start to think, well, I can leave that food because that food will be excess fat on the plate. So in many ways, there is a whole range of different things that can occur by placing your mind in the direction of where you want to be. Now, when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, obviously my job is to get them from where they are to where they want to be. And because they have the benefit of someone guiding them in this way, usually they can make those changes quickly, relatively quickly, usually two or three sessions. However, you can still do this. And this, sh this show is to complement my book, Miracles Happen With One Good Thought. And with the book and with these shows, you will be able to do that yourself by creating new positive emotional states, by creating new positive thought patterns without contradictions that actually benefit you, that actually assist you. So let's bring this back to the law of attraction. So when we talk about the law of attraction, what we're actually talking about is you changing your thought process, changing your mindset to begin changing situations around you. Because your life will reflect the emotional state that you are feeling and experiencing consistently at that time. So, if someone's feeling a victim, feeling hard done by, feeling that the world's a bad place, feeling that everything is always going against them, and then everything in their life seems to go wrong. But if you were to just shift that emotional set, just start to feel happier, start to do things that feel a little bit more fun, start to do things that feel a little bit better, whether it's playing a favourite piece of music or doing a favourite activity. If you do that consistently, you'll begin to create a better emotional state. And then things will begin to shift in your reality around you. Because how I like to think of life is that we are pure consciousness in physical body. And everything around us is a reflection of that consciousness. Every perception of everyone you see is a reflection of something inside you. So, for instance, if someone there makes your heart sing, makes you laugh, makes you feel happy, that's shining a light on the best of who you are. But if there's someone in your life that, you know, you don't like, you dislike, or creates problems in your life, maybe that's shining a light on something in you that needs changing, that in you that needs transforming. And when you begin to change that, then the perception of that individual changes. 
or that person just goes out of your life. I was working with a client many, many years ago and she had a husband and she came to me quite upset. And one of the reasons she was upset, he kept, he kept condemning her, kept criticising everything she did. And she used to tell me, you know, I, I just hate this, I absolutely hate this, I love him but I just hate this. So we worked on the situation, beginning to look at the reason why this was. And it, it turned out that this lady that I was working with felt a little bit worthless. She wasn't working and she didn't feel that she was having any purpose in life. So she was basically criticising herself through her inner dialogue. And what happened was, this then manifested as her husband beginning to criticise her. So what I did is I began to just get her to think better thoughts about herself. I wanted to build a better relationship with herself. Started to think of herself as she would one of her children. No matter what they did, they would always be loved. No matter what mistake they made, they would always be loved. And I just got her to think about this for a few days. And then every time her husband, because the reality wouldn't shift immediately, every time her husband turned round to her and made a criti critical remark or did something that upset her, I just said, just agree with him. Just agree. There's no need to fight it. Just agree. Just allow the reality to shift. And over a period of three to four days, what happened is because she agreed with her husband, she wasn't focused on the subject of being criticised, because she'd begun to make a shift in her emotional state about how she felt about herself. Within three or four days, her husband phoned her up and said to her, would you like to come out for a meal this evening? And he took her out for a meal. And from that day onwards, their relationship became better and better. He seemed to just automatically, by magic, stop criticising. The lady in question even called me a witch, which I'm not, obviously. But the reason she did that was because she couldn't understand how the change had happened so rapidly. But when you think back to me saying earlier that everything in life is a reflection of what you feel and what you think inside, when you begin to change what's bothering you, change the way you feel about it, then it can allow the situation to shift to that new emotional state because you will get what you think, what you feel about most of the time. And this happens with anything, whether it's to do with money, whether it's to do with relationships, whether it's to do with work, whether it's to do with health, it doesn't matter. I've worked with all sorts of people with all sorts of medical problems, all sorts of financial problems, all sorts of different phobias and various different things. And time and time again, the only fundamental thing that shifts, that allows them to change, is a change in their mindset, a change in their emotional state. And as you do this consistently, then, as I say, the situation around you, the law of attraction, allows all those situations to change. It's my personal belief, because I've had people say to me, but I've been applying this law of attraction stuff, I've been applying it. And the thing I like to say to people is, why does it need to be applied? You're living now. You've been living since the day you stepped forth into this world from your mother's womb. And from that very day you've been attracting. By when you were young you were attracting as a coordination of your vibration and your parents' vibrations and their attitudes and beliefs, which is where a lot of people pick up all these misconceptions along the way. All these doubts about themselves. But you don't think about creating your reality right now. You don't think about what you're manifesting in your life right now. You just do it with ease and calm. And what I say to people, if you're having to try or apply something, it's not right. It's, it, it's not going to work because there's too much effort. It should be done with the same ease, the same calmness, that you would think any thought and as you do that, you will see things magically shift. Even after just a few days, even after just a few days, you can begin to see evidence of things beginning to change. Now, obviously because the people that are watching this are not actually having the benefit of a one-on-one -on -one session with me, what I'd like to say to people is to start small. To start thinking in a small way. Start to think about something in particular. Let's, um, let's think of something now. Like, um, I don't know. A beautiful green piece of glass. Just think about it. Think about a green piece of glass. Think about the many things that can be made from that glass. 
bottle, wonderful plates and dishes and bowls. Think of the different colours of green, dark and light, frosted and shaded. Think of the different things that can be made, the windows. Think of the different textures, whether it's rough, smooth, hot, cold. And just spending just a few moments thinking and just enjoying thinking about something that means nothing at all, just a green piece of glass. And as you practice thinking about this, just for even a short amount of time, you will find that very shortly in your experience, maybe today or tomorrow or even the day after, you begin to notice green pieces of glass. They begin to pop up in your experience in all sorts of different ways and all sorts of different colours. And when this happens, if you've been doing this with me as I've been speaking today, I'd like you to email in and let me know. I love to hear of people's successes. Or if you've got any questions about what I'm talking about, please feel free to email in and ask. I'm more than happy to answer them. So that's basically what I would like people to do, is I'd like you to practice small first. And we can tackle the big things in later shows. Just start by proving to yourself that actually the power of thought does actually work. And it can work for you. And by using something small, something that's not important to you, there's very little chance that you come up against a big belief system or a big contradiction that could hold you in your tracks. When I first did this, people that know me, I used feathers. I started to think about all different sorts of feathers. I thought about feathers with stripes, black feathers, white feathers, pink feathers, red feathers, scarlet feathers, green, fluorescent green feathers. And every single one of them came. Every single one of them came within a matter of four weeks. And then I got to a peacock feather. And in my head, as I was thinking about this peacock feather, I thought, hmm, it'd be difficult for that to come at this time of year. Whoa, did I find out something major then. Because as soon as I said that, two weeks had gone by, this peacock feather had still not come. So I started to reassess about what I'd thought about, what actually I'd done. And when I realised, there's... I'd wanted the peacock feather, but I said it wouldn't come at this time of year. As soon as I said that, I created a belief. I created a belief that it wasn't possible to find one. So I'm beginning to say, no, no, peacock feather can be found any time, any place, anywhere. And I just began to change that belief because it was a small item, something that, that was absolutely immaterial whether it came or not. It wasn't a big belief system to break. So within a few days of thinking in this new way, I just carried on. A week later I went to visit a friend and I went to a friend who was exchanging different therapies and we were chatting about different things and I happened to gaze over to the window and right on the window in a vase six peacock feathers and I just started laughing and she turned around to me and she says what are you laughing at? And I says well peacock feathers look at those peacock feathers I've been thinking about them and she says, oh, you can have them if you want them. I don't use them anymore. I don't want them anymore. And I said, no, it's enough that I've seen them. And then a few days later, I was at a school. And I went into the storeroom. And there was piles and piles of peacock feathers. Hundreds of them all over the floor. So just to let you know that when you do actually start attracting the thing that you want, it comes in abundance because that belief system is completely broken down. So you can begin by now. You can begin by now just, just by thinking of things that allow you to feel good just for a little while, that, that soothe you, that create ease within your body, that create relief within your body. Just that feeling of relief, just that feeling of ease, just that feeling that everything's working out is enough over a period of time to begin to shift things for you, to begin to create ease in your life to begin to create a feeling of relief in your life. And you can do this just as anybody else because you're doing it already. You, you are the law of attraction. It's not something out there. It's not something out there that's invisible and you wave a magic spell and it just happens. You are the engine called the law of attraction. Everything out there is a product of you, a product of your emotional states. A product of your beliefs. And this is my intention through these shows to actually assist you to enhance your lives, to empower your lives, to live better, more productive lives. Through the different shows, we'll be going through different techniques, as I've said previously, on different subjects. But also, I'm going to bring other people onto the show too. People who've had success 
in utilising the power of their thought to bring the things they want. I'm going to bring people onto the show who utilise this awesome power in their lives, who, who have created transformation in their lives. And I'm going to be doing live techniques on the stage too, so that you can all see exactly how it's done, exactly how you can benefit. I'd like to say a big thank you to Mike England in having an amazing influence in my life. Um, I am a naturopath, holistic practitioner of many years experience, uh, a teacher of Reiki, hands-on healing therapy, and Mike has shown me some amazing things, shared some amazing things on how simple and how amazing life can be, and I've been able to share these with my friends, my family, and my patients. So I'd like to say a big thank you to Mike, and well done. Hello there and I'm back again now for the second part of this Miracles Happen with One Good Thought show. Now what I'd like to talk to you about in the second part of this show is actually beliefs. I'd like to talk about them in more detail. What are they? Well, as I've mentioned previously, they are thoughts that you practice, thoughts that you've thought over and over again. But how can people pick up so many beliefs that create so much discomfort in their lives, that create so many things that they choose not to have in their lives? Well, the answer is simple. A lot of it happens when we're very young. A child may be told they're stupid, or a child may be told that that's wrong, no, you can't have this, you will do this, you should do this, you try to do this, don't do that. And all these things a child will take on board because... All a child wants when they're younger is to behave in a way that pleases the adults around them. But here's the thing, it doesn't matter what you do for anyone else, anyone, it will never be enough. There's never enough yeses, there's never enough that you can do physically to please someone completely. And that's where a lot of these misconceptions, these beliefs that no longer serve, Get, come from. How many people were told when they were younger, well you need to get a good job, you need to go to school otherwise you'll never succeed. How many people are told when they were younger, well you'll never get anybody like that. Look at you, sitting there, you can't even bother to do your face. How many people are told things like this and more? How many people are told they're stupid, you're stupid, you'll never amount to nothing. How many people are in households where they're continually, continually subjected to Oh, there's a flu going around. Oh, God, I better not get this. Oh, I better not get this. And then all of a sudden, when that person's older, they begin to get colds and flus and pick up everything that's going around. All these belief systems, over a period of time, through observation of the people around you, through the life that you're living, begin to create beliefs. And when these beliefs are set, most of the time you don't even realise they're there because they become automatisms. They become automatic but as I've said previously, you can change any belief, no matter what it is. You can change any belief to something that's more suitable for you, that can work for you in a more beneficial way. So, what can you do right now? Well, as we talked earlier, you can begin by thinking about something that really doesn't matter, attracting feathers or a different piece of coloured glass or a particular bunch of flowers, my mother in particular... My mother, bless her, she loves things like this. She used her bright yellow flowers. And the funny thing is, she was thinking about this on the morning. And on the afternoon I was going to visit, and I had this incredible urge to buy these flowers for my mother, which I never do. 
and I took these flowers in and she just started laughing and she said that's what I wanted <laughs> so you can use absolutely anything but if you choose something as I've said previously that has no real emotional impact upon you you can actually get it easier to prove that this works one of the things I did years ago I've read it in many many books including The Secret and various other books Cosmic Order in Service and stuff like that and they used to say it's no easier to manifest a castle as it is a button and I thought okay I'd like to put this to the test anyway I got the button years went by the castle still hadn't come and I found it quite incredible that it hadn't come because I'm quite good at getting what I want and then just about a month ago I walked out the house and I looked down the road and realised something I'm living in a street where there's a castle right at the bottom of the road and it had been there in front of my eyes all along but because I hadn't asked to own it I'd just asked to have a castle and I have I've got the view of a wonderful castle every time I walk outside the house. So in fact it did actually come. I couldn't actually tell you how soon after now because it was so many years ago. But it did come. So never feel that there's nothing that you can't get. You can. You can. You just have to begin to shift those belief systems. Think of it this way. If you were walking down the street now and you wanted to attract a pound queen. Simply enough you think oh, I could find that easily but then think about I want to attract a million pounds not so simple maybe you may believe because a million pounds you're not likely to find in the street so you believe but if you asked a billionaire about attracting a million pounds is there no problem at all it's all about beliefs and it's about bridging those beliefs and what the techniques and all of the different resources that you'll be utilising from these workshops, from my books, from the downloads that will be available, is to actually bridge your beliefs so that you can begin living the life of your dreams, so that you can begin getting the things that you want. And it's not as difficult as you think, because you're thinking all of the while. All that I'm wanting you to do is to begin to think thoughts that feel better, that soothe you. For instance, if you're full of hate or depression, Feeling angry is better than that. So I'm not asking you to get from sadness or feeling helpless right up to this wonderful state of appreciation and excitement and enthusiasm and optimism. I'm not asking you to get there straight away. Just take incremental steps along the way. There's no rush. And this will allow you to bridge the belief more permanently. And it will also, you will also begin to notice changes within a matter of days sometimes a few weeks just because you've shifted that emotional set point from there to there even just one step forward will bring you closer to where you want to be but if I was going to give you any advice now the thing I would do now is I'd get you to find something that you really enjoy doing whether it's playing a piece of music whether it's watching a DVD a nice one obviously or whether it's just walking with the dog or just going out and playing with the children and I'd get you to absolutely do that as much as you possibly can just to create an emotional state of joy, of happiness because just creating that emotional state just for a short period of time you will begin to attract experiences in your life that replicate that that begin to replicate that in amazing ways because all that's required, most people have it back to front in the way they think. What they do is they live in the now, they feel in the past, and they negatively expect in the future. What I mean by that is you're living now, you've got a job interview, oh my god I won't get that job interview, or will I get that, or will I be nervous, negative expectation. And they're feeling the emotional state from some point in the past where they were told that they were no good or stupid or something happened or something was observed. So it's not really the most productive way to live because it just continues on the same pattern. The best way to live is to live in the now, feel in the now and positively expect in the future. Now I'm going to give you a technique to utilise. It's a technique that I use personally every single day. It's a very generic technique. So it doesn't require any mass effort, 
It doesn't require anything major, any major belief system to shift, but it will begin to create wonders in your life. When you wake up in the morning, before you even get out of bed, before you even brush your teeth, just lie there. Just lie there. Just enjoy lying in the bed, feeling the softness of the bed. Just not that nice, cosy state, just as you've woken up. And then start to think in your head, something wonderful is going to happen today. Something amazing is going to happen today. I just know that something incredible is going to happen today. I feel really, really good about today. Yes, something wonderful is going to happen today. Something that's going to just uplift my day. Something that's going to feel so good, it'll just be incredible. Yes, something wonderful is going to happen today. I'm not sure what it is, I don't need to know. All I know is it's going to feel incredibly good. It's going to soothe my soul. It's going to create ease in my body. Something wonderful, something amazing, something incredible, something so absolutely wonderful. And it's just going to happen today. Now, obviously, what I'd like you to do is to do this for five or ten minutes. Just really feeling that emotion, just really feeling that good feeling. And then just go through your day. And then at the end of the day, List all the things that happened that made you feel good. Whether it be seeing a beautiful flower, or seeing a beautiful sunrise, or your children behaving in a better way, or just something that someone said to you at work that felt good, or something an employer said. Maybe just someone being nice to you in the street. Because the thing is about those words that we use, something wonderful can imply any of those things and more. And as you continue to use it, as you continue to consistently feel that positive expectation that's being created, and as you continue to move through the day feeling good from the positive expectation that you've created, you begin to live in the now. You begin to feel in the now. And you begin to look forward to things coming. And when you get to that place consistently, Everything that you've ever wanted comes anyway. Because wonderful can imply everything. Not just a sunrise, not just a beautiful flower, but it can imply abundance, it can imply love, it can imply opportunity, it can imply travel, it can imply winning the lottery, it can imply so many things. And as you consistently remain in that state, positively expecting, and really, really enjoying the good things that are happening, then all those things that you want become to come anyway. Because this is the thing. There's two ways you can attract. There's two ways you can attract. And I hear you asking, well, you just told me there's one. Well, there is one in fact, but there's two ways I'm going to explain to you. The first is, as soon as you experience something in life that you don't want, whether it's a lack of money, or whether it's being overweight, or whether it's not being in love, that situation instantly tells you what you want. So what does no money tell you you want? It tells you you want more money. What does not being in love tell you? It tells you you want to be in a relationship. What does not being happy tell you? It tells you you want to be happy. So all these problems and situations that people perceive in life are there to tell you one thing and one thing only, that what you're thinking, what you're feeling is not working out for you. What is it you do want? So as these situations come, ask yourself the question, I don't want this, what do I want? And instantly move your thoughts and emotional states in that way. And as you begin to do this consistently, you'll begin to shift. You'll begin to see changes. You'll begin to see things happening. And that technique which I've just given you, don't underestimate its simplicity. It's a very powerful technique in actually getting you to the place of where you want to be. Bringing the things that you want to be. Now, those two things I was talking about. You can think about something. Let's say it's a brand new job. You can think about a new job. It'd be good to have a new job. Let's just look at the way your inner dialogue should be working. If that job is going to come to you successfully. It'd be good to get a new job. 
Don't know what that job is, but it'd be good to do something that's satisfying. It'd be good to do something that brings a lot of abundance into my life. It'd be good to do something that I'm happy doing. It'd be good to do something that I enjoy doing. Now, I don't know what that thing is yet, but I know that I'm on the right path, and I know that that path is being made known to me, and that everyday opportunities are going to present themselves to me, and I'll just know through a good feeling, through exhilaration, which path to go, which job to take. I know as I walk through life just thinking about how good it is to just think about that job. To just love thinking about waking up in the morning and feeling excited about going to that job. I know that it'll arrive. Now that's one way. And you can think like that continually. Not continually through the day, just five or ten minutes each day or twice a day or whichever suits. And then whenever you think about that job, just think it's all taken care of, it's all in hand. And as you do that consistently you will begin to attract new opportunities and you will feel by impulse, by intuition, by urge as to when to act, as to which job to take. And that's one way that the law of attraction works, by thinking about it and feeling it and really enjoying it. But let's look at another situation. Let's say someone's thinking of a brand new Porsche. They want a brand new Porsche on their car. They think about driving it, they close their eyes, they imagine driving it down the road, feeling in the seats. And then the instant they open their eyes, rather than just enjoying the rest of that good feeling, they instantly think, how's that going to come? Well, that's not here yet. Well, there's no possible way for that to come at the moment. And as people think those thoughts, they actually negate the thought of what they want. So sometimes, when we think about something too specifically from a place of discomfort or a place of not knowing where it's going to come, we're more aware of the absence of it, of not having it. So what can you do? The simple fact is, you can just forget about it. You can just think about it and never think about it again and eventually it'll just pop up in your life. Me? I'll tell you about me. Years and years ago, I wanted a beetle. They'd just come out. Brand new beetle. The new shape, the new design, everything. Never come. Because as soon as I closed my eyes, as soon as I opened them, I was aware that I hadn't got it. I was aware that I was driving an old maestro. And I thought, this is not a beetle. And I was too aware, the discomfort was in was too great. In other words, the belief between having the maestro and getting the beetle was too great, which created a massive contradiction. And that contradiction prevented it from coming. If instead I'd have let it go, it would have come quicker. So what happened? Well, years went by actually, about five or six years in fact. And I'd completely forgotten about it. And all of a sudden, I came into some money. It was about £18,000. And the thought popped in my head instantly. I'll buy a new car. I want a bright, fluorescent orange beetle. So, I went online trying to find this bright orange beetle. Couldn't find it. They only do them in beige. So I ordered the beige one and I thought, that's okay. Top of the range, nice beige beetle. I'll have it painted. Well, as soon as I ordered it, not one paint shop would take it in. Because I wanted the inside doing and the outside doing. So I just thought, that's okay. It'll be absolutely fine. Everything will sort itself out. It's what I want. I'm choosing to let this one go. I'm releasing this. It's not important to think about it. I don't have to think about the detail. Let the detail take care of itself. Notice that simple process of just letting go. And I didn't just have one conversation like this, I had many conversations like this. Every time it came and me out, it's okay, it's all being taken care of. Anyway, two weeks before I was due to pick it up, I had a client arrive. Her husband owned a paint shop. The sessions were so successful, she asked him if he would consider doing the car. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So I had a bright orange beetle, inside and outside, painted. Now, I attracted that in both ways. I used both techniques. The first technique was letting go, because thinking about it was too uncomfortable. As soon as I let it go, it came, but it came years later, because of the discomfort I was experiencing in life at the time. 
And the second way, with the colour of the paint, I just thought about it in a casual way. It's been taken care of, it's been sorted, nothing to think about. And it works stupendously using both of those techniques. Now you may ask the question, how come it took so long if you let it go? Well, this is the thing. You attract your emotional state. Now, through those few years between when I had the car to when, to when I didn't have the car to when I had the car, I wasn't in a very good place in life. Things were changing, relationships were breaking down, jobs were changing, house moves were happening. In fact, there was a lot of discomfort in my life at that time. So I wasn't consistently feeling good. But as soon as my life was back in order and I was consistently feeling good and enjoying life and loving life and really reveling in life, whoa, did that come and it comes so quick it knocked me off my feet. I didn't even know or even think about the beetle until I was in that place of consistently feeling good. So if you do choose to use that technique of just letting it go, what I encourage you to do is rather than going the long route like I did, why don't you just do things that soothe you, that feel good, that create ease. And as you do these things, you will allow yourself to create more positive emotional states in your life, which will allow the things you want to come so much quicker. So much quicker. And this is the thing I have to tell people all of the time. You don't need to think about what you want all of the time. Because as soon as you're aware you've not got it, as soon as you're aware you've got no money, you know instantly you want more money. All your job is to get out there and feel as good as you possibly can and just let it flow. And it will. And it will. And that small, simple technique that I've just given you, if it's practiced faithfully every morning, within a few days, you begin to notice things. If you begin to list at the every day, at the end of every day, all the wonderful things that are happening in your life. You will begin to create more of those positive emotional states, but you will be creating the positive expectation state from the morning technique. And as you continue to do that, within just a matter of weeks, I've had people's lives transform with that technique, bringing all sorts of different things that they want, whether it's improved business. I had a client recently, in, uh, as, in as, few as, as few as a few weeks ago, who was worried about this recession, worried about that there's no money there. So someone got it and threw it off the planet, has someone just got rid of it? No, they haven't. All that's happened is it's about the proportion of the money that there. There's probably more money there now than there ever was. But people's emotional states are observing, oh, there's recession, oh, there's hard times, oh, there's this. So people continue to attract the lack of money. So I got this lady to begin to do this. I got this client of mine who got their own business to begin to apply this, you know, positive expectation feeling state. And the business is thriving, absolutely thriving for a brand new business in this so-called climate. I choose not to watch the news or the media because I think that everything on the news or media is over-exaggerated. All of the bad is exaggerated. All of the negative is exaggerated. Very rare are they telling you about the wonderful new babies that are born, the wonderful sunsets that rise every day, the wonderful holidays that people experience, the wonderful people that have overcome cancer today, the wonderful people that have walked out of a hospital and recovered today, the wonderful people that have had a happy day today, the wonderful people that have fell in love today. All those things are just left behind. But those are the things I want you to focus on. I want you to think about. I made a personal choice not to watch the media because I want to be the attractor of my experience. I want to be the person that uses my thoughts to create the life that I want. And I felt that observing those situations, whether it be in the media or whatever it may be, newspapers, I just felt that I didn't want to attract those situations. I didn't want to attract those states of mind and I didn't want them coming into my experience. So I chose to shut them out. And now I live a life, of, a wonderful life, a wonderful life. And it wasn't always like that. And this is why I'm doing these shows. This is why my books are there. This is why there's downloads on my website. Purely and simply to help you, to empower you to the same changes, to empower you to the same transformations. And I don't say these things like that. I've got years and years of experience of working with clients one-on-one -on -one to help them to achieve what they want to and now i want to share that with everyone out there 
through the various techniques, through the various shows, and we'll be covering, you know, one show maybe on abundance, one show maybe on relationships, and we'll be working it out as we go along. I'm sure it'll just flow absolutely perfectly. But please, if there's any questions or any subjects or anything that you want help with, that you want specifics on, please, the email address is at the bottom of the screen. Please, just email in. Email in. And if I can't answer in this show, I'll certainly answer it in one of the forthcoming future shows. Also, my website, www.freedomhypnosis.org.uk, which is at the bottom as well. If you look under the Law of Attraction tab, there's lots and lots of different pages there on different subjects with different techniques. But if you look under the radio interview, when I did my personal appearances on radio, right at the bottom is a free download. This will assist you immediately to begin to release old thought patterns. So please feel free to download it. Please feel free to listen to it. Because that's what it's there for. So for now, I'm going to bring this show to an end now, and I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope it's been informative, and I look forward to meeting with you again. Bye now.